You're doing the opening. You haven't been here in so long. Do you need me to do it? Welcome to Mountaineer. Oh, Mountaineer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you can do this. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Welcome. That was good. That was good. Wow. With the bass. That was, uh, that was something. How you been? I'm good, man. I'm just, I'm just so thankful you could grace us with your presence. Audience, if you don't know, this is Triple A. Always absent Andy. <sighs> I'm sorry. we got to find a way to make it typically always absent Andy. <laughs> Ta. <laughs> What's that from? We just made it up. We just made it up just now on the spot. Um, I don't know what order these are going to come in now that we're recording <clears throat> this one, but last we're episode confused. we talked about end times, and now I want to dive a little bit more into that but give more of a timeline around it because that was such a good conversation, and it was very positive on, on the channel. And it... it never ceases to blow my mind how the Bible is so accurate. And of all the religions and all the things I've ever read, I, I can't, I mean, because our God's the living God and he's in control, this is, I mean, you can back this up with not only the Bible, but with historical facts. And it, when you look at how the world's going and how things are changing, um, it just gives more credence to study up on this, prepare yourselves for it, and, and be ready for, for what's to come. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the timeline of are we in the end of times and how long will that be? Um, when I started doing my research on this, it was at the beginning of the year, the doomsday clock. And you guys know about the doomsday clock. For those who don't, it's the um, bunch of scientists and, and, and smart people get together together. And they decide how much time we have until the clock strikes midnight and it's the end of the world. Well, it was at 100 seconds to midnight. And when the Ukraine war started, it was at 90 seconds. Because of the, the big thing was because of the threat of nuclear war, we're now 90 seconds away from the destruction of the world. I've never heard of Doomsday Clock. Never? Never. Have you guys? Yeah. Yeah. No joke. Here, so here's a picture of the... I believe you, yeah, man. No, it's, it's interesting that we even have that. Now, and this is coming from man's perspective. Is so it this put is, on for like, like, like the World Bank or something like that? This has been going on since <laughs> w, in the WW2, I believe. Since, really? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Uh, since the atomic age. Oh, so it's directly associated with... It's more based war. off of nuclear war. They do take it's in... Nuclear. Uh, George Bush was wrong, I'm sorry. I, I, nuclear. <laughs> nuclear. Um, <laughs> famines and diseases and stuff that go around kind of play into that but the one thing that doesn't play into this clock is, or their equation is sin and all the oh. aspects of that this is more of a secular view on things um, I would personally think that we're within less than 30 seconds if we add in all of the signs that we're seeing that the, that the Bible talks about do you guys agree or uh, there's not any signs left that need to be that need to occur. I everything everything's there for the rapture. There's not another prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. Because there's the, there's several that come after that will be fulfilled, but that's mm -hmm. after the rapture. The, the, we're in the 69th week, in other words, is what I feel like. Mm -hmm. And the 70th week is the rapture. My only thought with that is, I feel like most generations have believed or felt in some capacity that. Oh man, we're in the end times. Albeit, there's a lot of manifestation of prophecy, but my thought process is more: how much further could it go? Like we're talking about, we've got these phones that that we have immediate access to, but how much more can it be so that it's? I mean, we're talking VR and all that. I type think of that's stuff, man. That's the biggest one right there is because we know, and I'm not going to jump ahead to next week's episode or how whatever order this go in is the two witnesses that that get. McDuck. That's an office reference. Murdered in the. Uh, <laughs> was that the um, the Southern Game mm, what? episode? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, well, they I get murdered, and they, they they get murdered, and everybody can see it at once, and 
it's all around the world where there's never been a time like now, not even 30 years ago, that everybody could have seen this. So instantaneously, too. Correct. And it's so celebrated, they start sending gifts. And, you know, did you see what they finally... But we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that but a little bit later. You haven't been here enough, Andy, to know that the... Uh, like, one of the last... Uh, last. <laughs> oh, he's starting. The, see, he caught it last week. Did the you last, watch it? The um, last sign is... Uh, is deception because we've had all the other all the other signs r- wars rumors of wars pestilence all that stuff yeah but the last one that really hit was deception and deception is running rampant right now yeah. no i'm a loyal subscriber to mountaineer kingdom dude talk <laughs> like and subscribe share share um <laughs> so good plug Matthew 24 tells us that a generation... On YouTube, Facebook, and whatever this new Twitter X thing is. All of them rumble. Everything that we're on now, which is about everything. What is rumble? It's people that Donald Trump fans like. Yeah. Oh, you're not... You say it like you're not a Trump fan. See no. how this just went to... <laughs> <laughs> um, you instantly woke the bear at the table. I want to hear him purr. <laughs> um, that was good. I impressed I, I myself. Didn't, I didn't do that. Oh, okay. No, I did. <laughs> I was complimenting myself. Was complimenting you looked at me yourself. like I did it. I was waiting for you to... Anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm just the Bible tells us that a generation shall not pass. Well, only the Bible can verify the Bible. Um, in a gener- and it says a generation is typically 70 to 80 years. So when does the clock start? That, that's the big question is, does it start at 1948? Did it start in 1967? Did it start in 1988 or 89 when Russia opened up the doors for Jews to return back to Israel? 48 is my opinion. I'll, I'll kind of go through my timeline that I, I was studying on, and I'll walk through it, and you guys jump in and tell me what you think. Because if that's the case, like we only have... We're 75 years into it, if that's have, the case. We have like five years left. So, But it says that's the beginning of the birthing pains. Can, is, that's can a, you go ahead and quote the the scripture you're talking about that no um, generation so, shall pass between what because that's kind of open i appreciate the thought process but you guys are associating it with the institution of israel as a new nation again yes we're going to let's do that now let's start at that first thing we're going to talk about you have zephaniah up i've got zephaniah all right in 1917 Find it. It's so great to have you the have, band back together again. You should have a laptop or something. So Get you can the see band it. together. I should have had it, and then they said it was too bulky. Um, yeah, it was, it was the early 1900s. 1955. Elazar Ben Huda, Huda, I probably butchered that. He revived the Hebrew language in Israel, and all the Jews who were fleeing from Europe and Russia were brought back to the Jewish people that had been scattered for over 2,000 years. So from 70 AD until 1948 when the when Israel became a recognized state again they were scattered so the language you mentioned that was the language considered dead and this guy resurrected it for the Jewish people yes they were not using the Hebrew language at this time even in independent studies I'm not I don't know much about Jewish they, history. They were they not as a it state prayer, or a. But they, it wasn't as an official language. So it was privately within like certain circles. Gotcha. So very interesting. Yeah. To to resurrect a dead language is a significant. Especially feat. for over two thousand years. So you're looking at two millennia where they did not use regularly an, an entire nation. Right. An entire nation that was separated around the entire world reassembled and were speaking a language that had not been spoken correct and when they got jerusalem back in 1948 it was half they did they had the west not the east um so read zephaniah for us if you will then i will purify the speech of all people so that everyone can worship the lord together so that's in the early 1900s and then oh, i'm going to butcher how this is said in 1970 the balfour declaration was issued by the british government after World War One, to establish the Jewish home. Um, later on uh, in WW2, no, later on in that, he, he, Truman confirmed that, yes, the United States is also going to recognize Israel. It's not until 1948 until that happens. Um, there's a lot of comparison to Ezekiel about the dry bones, how the bones are scattered, and he brings them back together. And I'm going to find it here in a second. Actually, go ahead and look up Ezekiel 37, verse 11. 
and when you read this, I want you guys to think about the Holocaust and what they went Ezekiel through. what? Uh, 37 verse 11 through 14. Because the way he's talking through the dry bones is talking to me. I hear how Israel scattered, how they're not together, how you found it. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. and We ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophecy and say to them or prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh, my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So we have two superpowers in Britain and America who were behind, hey, Israel needs to be a recognized state again. It wasn't until the Holocaust that the United Nations had enough sympathy for the for the Jewish people because six plus million Jews were slaughtered. Mm -hmm. So now they have enough sympathy to become a nation again. That begins in 1948. Um, and, when you, and when you think about all this stuff happening, the Holocaust happening, and how they try to even bury that. And some people don't believe that it, it didn't even happen. Never happened. So that's how evil works. <clears throat> evil wants to suppress prophecy from being fulfilled, wants to take it out of the minds of the people so that it, it hinders the move. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The purpose of the Holocaust <clears throat> was to keep this from happening. Well, so I mean, like all, all this stuff, one, it was to keep it from happening. And then two, it did happen, but they wanted to keep it from being known that it yep. happened. So it's almost like the enemy caught wind or they had a feeling that, hey, God's moving. Let's stop it. Does that sound like well, things we're, we're going to jump into so, that here in a little bit? So it, it, there, in, in, in prophecy in the Bible, God keeps certain things hidden until the time. Well, he says it in Daniel. In, until the time starts coming. And then you inherently know when that time's come because the sign you're able to start identifying the signs mm -hmm. when when the really any of the Bible was written uh, a lot of the things that was talked about they had no they had no concept of what to explain what they were seeing in the vision like so John when he was writing the book of Revelation most of the things he saw he had no idea how to put that into words because he had no idea that it, that it was going to exist mm-hmm and um, there was no way for, for him to tell. But we are now living in those days. We can see what he was writing about and and be able to, to say, okay, this is what this means. This is what this means. Because God revealed it to us, one, by the, by the Holy Spirit, and then two, because we're living in, in the days that, that are being described in the Bible. Yep. The thing that kind of sticks out to me is when we're, we're doing this study, and it's, it's fascinating, um, when does the clock start? Because Matthew 24 tells us, uh, and I've learned this from a, an amazing Sunday school class, you guys should, should attend it, that <laughs> when you start seeing these signs, these are the beginning of the birthing pains. I mean, we've All of us here have kids. We know what it's like when uh, a woman's in labor and that starts. It, it's not intense and, and super painful all at once. It It's almost like it, it eases into it, it's bearable, it's controllable, and then it's the worst pain ever. That's That's what's coming. So I, and this is why I believe the clock starts at 1948 specifically. Um, you have Isaiah 11 and 11 up. Will you read 11 through 12? On that day, the Lord will extend his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people who survive from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and the coasts and islands of the West. He will lift up a banner for the nations and gather the dispersed of Israel. He will collect the scattered of Judah from the cor from the four corners of the earth. So we know Israel was pretty much disbanded and, and scattered. The first time was by who? Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second time, it's just why I believe the clock starts at 1948, is this is the only time a na in the history of our civilization on earth that a nation has been scattered not once but twice and came back to become a nation. So in order for that to be fulfilled, Israel had to be that nation the second time. 
which and you, you're studied up on this. Do you agree it's 1948 or you have your own? Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of struggle on that because I think it might be 1948, but at the same time, it's in the late 1980s when the mass mm-hmm. um, exodus into back into um, Israel really started occurring when Russia opened up and, and, and the uh, Russia became um, a little bit more open to to the um, to the rest of the world and got rid of the Iron Curtain. I, and I think that it's still occurring because right now the Reagan. United the Mr. Reagan Bush, Gorbachev, tell the, down this wall. The the U.S. still has a, a significant Jewish population in it. No, I, and I, I kind of I agree with you to an extent. I I think 1989, and I'll jump in a few more. Maybe it's like what you were talking about. I think that's those like pains a, are intensifying. Yeah, they so are. they're a nation again. I think that's the key is they have the Holy Land back. Mm-hmm. And then as they come to it, it's more of those birthing pains getting well, more it's intense. It's the first time since the Babylonians took over Israel mm-hmm. that they have their country back, mm-hmm. which... The, the, the way the Bible is put together, especially the Old Testament, it's a little deceitful, not deceitful, but it's a little, it's a little hard to, to follow um, because you've got your, how, how it's broken up is your major prophets and your minor prophets. And if you, it's not put together in a chronological order. True. So the prophecies of Daniel is really the last prophecies um, that really occurred. <laughs> All the other prophets were writing and, and prophesying during the, the same times as Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel mm-hmm. and Jeremiah the, the, in those eras. So um, that's that's something that has kind of like blown my mind as, as, I, as I really start studying into it. Is The exact chronological order of... Yeah. Is, is, is more with Daniel being one of the last major pro one of the last prophets to prophesy over Israel. And then that's when you got your 483 years of, mm-hmm. of quiet time is not from when Malachi prophecies occur <laughs> or, but it's actually from when Daniel's prophecies. Yeah. Well, there's that. And I think, and, and then again, you get, feel free to jump in. I didn't mean deceitful that the Bible's deceitful. No, he did. Perry Stone doesn't agree with that either. Um, <laughs> Jeez, always. There we go. That's my yeah. only one because he gave sign. Andy yeah, a hard right. time early on. Because um, we were talking about this seven day minus or the seven day war minus one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was factual. Luke 21, <laughs> 20 through 24 talks about how um, that the Gentiles will yeah, trample. Right. In Jerusalem, which anytime the Bible refers to a Gentile is when a non-Jew is in control of Jerusalem. If Perry Stone ever watches this, he's going to take a hit out on you. <laughs> no, right. He's a good guy. I met him. I met him at a distance. Um, he knows me. So, so you enjoyed that that I conference just as much as I absolutely did, so. loved it. Uh, it was very refreshing. You totally redeemed yourself. Um, I think you. So in order you, for didn't you join his, like partner up with him too? He gets a newsletter every week. No, I was going to, but I didn't. Oh, I, I, went, I, went to, I went to other people. But <laughs> again, to keep us on track since Andy's here, and we want to keep teaching before He secretly gets his monthly man messages <laughs> every month in the mail. I read them all. I don't get any. Um, Welcome to Mountaineer Kingdom Do Talk. 1989 is a big one because the 1.7 Russian Jews come back. Um, but don't forget, in 1917 is when the uh, Gentiles trample in Jerusalem. And then we skip all the way from 1989. There's really not much going on until the year 2000. And this is kind of referring to what you were just talking about, that Gabriel speaking to Daniel about there's so much happening that he says, shut these words up. They're not yet to be revealed. And I did an interesting little study on up until the 1900s, the human knowledge typically doubled every hundred years. When we get to... After World War II, we start doubling every 25 years. Now we're up in today's world that we're doubling our knowledge every two to three months. I mean, AI is not even six months old. And knowledge is perspective, what we think we know, not <laughs> actual truth if it's not founded in this. Um, so now that we're getting so close to this and we have sin on the rise like we've never seen it before, states in their country can come in and say you know what you don't agree with what your child believes they are 
we can take your rights away. There's so much sin abounding mm-hmm. that, and this is some of the things I think Daniel w- was not supposed to speak about because it's, it's, I don't want to put a date on anything. I don't know when Jesus is coming back. Any man who says he does is wrong. I'm just trying to come up with, with a timeline. But especially the way knowledge, it, it keeps increasing. I mean, you can get chat GPT, I believe it's called. Yep. Tell me a story about Andy Tennant, and it'll come up with this. It'll come up with you. It's pretty cool. It, it's it's intense, and never before in our history have we seen such an increase of what we call knowledge. I'm just enjoying listening. You've done a lot of research here, and I feel like I'm sitting in a college class right now. Nah, uh, that's not the goal. But <laughs> it's, it's interesting information it, to kind of figure out listening to where are we at in this timeline. I don't know that the timeline. I know that's what we're talking about, but, you know, it's so easy to get focused as Christians on understanding this piece of it when our charter, our charge is Mm -hmm. to spread the gospel. Yeah. Not convert people, just speak about the story. Share the gospel. Tell people the story of Jesus. If he's going to get them, he's he's got them already. It's just a matter of time, and we're, we're a vessel for making sure that it gets there. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes this end times conversation gets in the way of understanding that. And when we attach a timeline to it, it's like, Oh man, now you get the dude sitting on the side of the street. Hey, <laughs> the end this, is coming. This, this the end is the end is here. Yeah. Yep. And I grew up in the, in a tradition where my motivation for faith was based on fear, not love. And when we use this as a way to kind of beat the gospel drum, you get converts via the fear perspective rather than understanding Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. It's interesting that you brought that up. Why? (laughs) We just talked about that. Yeah. Well, uh, and let let me go back to the, um, sorry to mean, no, no, no. The timeline is a lesson, man. No, it it is good stuff. Good, good stuff. But, uh, when you look in timeline, you're right. No one knows. No one knows. No one knows the hour. Jesus doesn't even know, you know, before his father tells him, but you look at, where we're at and what the Bible does say in near the end days, evil will be called good mm-hmm. and good will be called evil. We're seeing that yeah. garbage now. And even though AI to, you know, Trekkies might seem cool, but it's artificial intelligence. Right. And so we've already talked about this. What God creates, the devil counterfeits. Mm-hmm. So intelligence that's artificial is not from God, mm-hmm. you know, so wisdom comes from God. Uh, Jared, Jared's going to attack me here in a minute for the. <laughs> no, I was actually I was agreeing with you and and kind of going to touch on what we talked about last episode with the transhumanism as mm-hmm. being one more step closer to as in the days of Noah with yep. the, the the Nephilim. Yeah, it, it's just interesting the the way that you just described the how knowledge the it, AI is not real knowledge and really all the AI is is a quick reference of the knowledge that we currently have. Right. If you take everything within our books, Mm -hmm. that's what AI is. Right. And And then all the nonsense that they want to put in there too. But even rewinding back, it's artificial intelligence because he pulled it together, but it's just what we already think we know, which is what you were talking about. And just because I think we need to have a sense of urgency, which is why I like this topic and the timeline, because I want, I think it shows and gives us a foundation of what we should be discussing. We have seen the beginning of the birthing pains, regardless of what year that clock starts in. Mm -hmm. Get right with Jesus now. Prepare to die tomorrow, but be ready to live forever. Right? And and if when we get into our next episode, which we're going to dive into tribulation, and I know you've done a lot of good research on this, I don't want anyone to be here. Right. So if someone can hear this, um, beforehand, you're, the timeline, or you're in the tribulation. You happen to hear this. This timeline is not going to matter because it's already over with. You're you got a whole world of problems. We'll talk about in the next episode. Um, but I think this gives me more motivation to like look. So if we are, if the baby's coming, and I need a plan in place for me, my family, and the people that I need to start ministering to, mm-hmm. because I'm seeing that it's getting closer. I feel that it's getting closer, closer, and closer. Here's my reasons why. Let me tell you what Jesus did. The whole love message of Christ is absolutely incredible, but it is a terrible thing to be in the hands of a living God that is just. 
And I'm not saying bring back fire and brimstone messages that, you know, you're going to go to hell if you don't repent, which is true. But if someone steps out in faith to accept Christ, regardless of, of what that motivation is right. and his true conviction, <clears throat> then let's get the true conviction out there. Speak the message, because I think we're, we're getting too watered down. Yes, Jesus is love, but yes, he is also just and judgment's coming. And I'm not doing it as a scare tactic. If that scares you, then you need to reflect that with 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 Christ and have a conversation. Yeah, that's that that's good stuff, man. That's solid, and I would completely agree with you. I believe mm-hmm. that the gospel message, at least in American Christianity, has been watered down. There needs to be a balance of both, I guess. Uh, is absolutely. What I'm there, well, it's no different than the way that our children should perceive us and the way that we should relate with our children. We are gentle and loving and kind as fathers to our children until it's time to be like, no. This is what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And I think every one of us around this table can agree that there are times for us to sit and be calm and play with our children. But then there's also times for us to establish a line. Mm -hmm. We we don't cross this and we have to be firm. And that's... Hundred percent. We set our standards because God set a standard on us as Christians. There you go. Mm -hmm. He he gave us the way. Do you want to say something? Yeah. So, a couple a couple points. The talking about the end times the rapture all that all that stuff and and i mean this book for us is basically a a, a road map mm-hmm. to give us the signs so that way those of us that are christians can look at these signs and not be alarmed but actually be encouraged that all the crap that we're seeing there there's ultimately an end to it and that end uh, that we will see will be in the rapture spending time in heaven and then ultimately coming back and ruling and reigning with, with Christ. But for, for those that aren't believers, it is scary because there's a lot of unknowns. You, 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 the deception is there. And the, the stuff that we're seeing as believers in the Holy Spirit is revealing us through the scriptures really kind of shows, doesn't show that they don't, they don't get it. They don't understand it. So it becomes a fear issue for them. But we really have two two big messages. One is, for those who aren't saved, it is the gospel, and we aren't preaching the gospel in churches today. We're not even preaching a tenth of the gospel in churches today. And well, it's the next flavor of the month. It's what flavor of ice cream is is the special? Is it grace? Is it is it prosperity? I mean, what's the flavor this week? When it should be what Christ did on the cross to prevent us from being in the hands of a living God. Um, but but the whole, well, the, the the whole gr- rapture, the, the, the talk about the rapture is supposed to be encouragement to us. It is. Yeah, I would say I'm, I, we talk about this mm-hmm. and I get excited. I'd yeah. be, and I don't know if I should because I know that there's going to be significant death and destruction. But as a child of God chosen by I'm God. I'm not going to wait here. I, yeah. I, it's I think more if, exciting if someone would Christ. preach the grace message fully mm-hmm. instead of the sugared down part of and this is a true part, whatever you do, Jesus will still forgive you and love you. So that's absolutely true. But grace is more encompassing than just that. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, when you actually read and understand, you know, revelation is supposed to be a blessing for those who read and understand. We're not supposed to be scared of, we're, we're supposed to be like, Oh, okay, great. You know, we're going to be out of here. But then you, you read on through the rapture, the tribulation, the millennial reign. Grace is still there. God still gives you an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Well, even because he loves you that much. Grace is all through it. Even next week's topic on tribulation, that is a sign of God's ultimate grace because it's it's giving those who haven't chosen one more opportunity right. before uh, eternal damnation. Yep. And uh, it's going to be a and, tough opportunity, a tough opportunity. <laughs> but at the same time, like he is the book of Revelation has spelled it out almost to a T on what's going to happen. So not let me just throw, throw out some biblical stats to you. And this is this gets me fired up. So I was up so late last night. It's like when you find something you're, you're studying, you feel that fire in your soul start burning. You're like, okay, here we go. Thirty percent of the Bible is prophecy, and most of that time of that prophecy, we're living in in this in this generation. The return of Jesus is mentioned three hundred and twenty nine times in the Bible. There are two hundred and sixteen chapters in the New Testament. Of these chapters, the return is mentioned three hundred and eighteen times which gives us a stat of one out of 30 verses is going to talk about the return of Jesus Christ. Um, in the uh, Old Testament, 17 of 39 books mention the return of Christ. 
And in the New Testament, 23 of 27 books refer to the return of Christ. It even goes so far back as to the time in Genesis. Although it's not mentioned in Genesis, the book of Jude refers to Enoch, and I'll read that one to you. It was about these that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all of the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts that they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh thing ungodly sinners have said against him. So even as far back removed, we're getting close to back to the beginning of, of Adam, it's prophesying. So the whole plan since the fall, since the fall was for Christ to return, redeem and save his people and bring judgment. Do you think we need to talk about the difference between the second coming of Christ and the, and the rapture? Mm-hmm. Because the, yeah, there's two different things, two, two completely different events. And I think all of us at this table, um, all agree that it's, it's, it's going to be a pre-trib rapture as opposed to mid-trib or post-trib. Um, but the old Testament doesn't talk about, um, any, any, any of the rapture or the, or the catching away that, that is something that's revealed to Paul. It's the second return with his, it's, it's the, the second the return. Saints. Right. And, and that's where the, the, the Jews got it. The, they, they, they got confused when they were reading the prophecies on Jesus's first coming. They were, they were reading the prophecies about his second coming and expecting that King. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that's not what the, that's not the King that it came. It was, it was the, the sacrificial lamb and, um, where the the rapture, the rapture. I mean, Jesus is not. He's not really coming back to earth. I mean, he's he's going to be in the heavenlies. The angels going to call us, and mm. we're going to be during know, the rapture. Yeah. During the rapture. <clears throat> yeah, it's, yeah. A lot of people have that confused. They think that's one and the same. We we tend to, and the church has gotten this wrong for a millennia, in that we preach it the. The, that they're two of the same things when they're, they're two completely separate events. Yep. And, and that's important to know because the rapture is, okay, now we're going to go through seven years of the worst seven years on earth up to that point. What's What part of scripture talks about, and, and I agree with you, it's just been a while since I've actually studied it, but what part of scripture talks about the differentiation between that? There's going to be the rapture, and then there's going to be the seven years of tribulation. I don't, I don't have it memorized, but Paul talks about it in Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Yeah, Second the Thessalonians, ca- capture First Corinthians, the and then right after the rapture, First Thessalonians, it talks about the uh, the seven year tribulation. And that gets layered over the Revelation story. Right. Yeah. And that, <clears throat> the tribulation is where the seven seals are open and such, and then the yeah. So right now, so you were talking about timeline. There, there is, and even with Daniel's prophecy, there was no date. There was no line, date, but there were times like seven, seven times, seven times, seven, whatever. So that leads us up to the sixty-nine weeks is where we're at right now, mm-hmm. and then the seventieth week will be the rapture time. That's where it talks about in Second Thessalonians, uh, talking about the evil one will not be held back by the Holy Spirit anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't depart from us necessarily, but that's when evil uh, will reign after rapture time because it'll be seven years of tribulation trials and, and hardship. So if you're left behind, I think Nick said it would be a hard pill to swallow to try to be saved during that time. But the Holy spirit will still be there to convict you. Cause that's the only way you can be saved. So just to clarify that 69 week timeline, that's an allegory. That's not a literal 69 weeks. And what it is, it, is right. th- there's a literal years and it was Daniel <clears throat> prof- prophesied 490 years. And it was four Jewish calendar. It was four hundred and eighty three years from the time the prophecy was given until Jesus was was on the earth and, and died and was resurrected. So then that's when God put a pause button on the Jewish time and we, we came into the age of the church. Mm-hmm. So we are in that last seven years. Now, once the church is pulled up out and raptured out, then God hits the play button again, and we continue to count that next seven years. Interesting perspective. Because there's going to be such deceit, and I don't want to jump ahead too much in the next week's episode, but there's a time to where deception comes from Satan, delusion comes from God, and that's in Second Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a time that you reject Christ so much 
that you can't accept truth anymore. So mm-hmm. there's going to be a f- slip, a flip, a, a switch that's flipped in your head that says, you know what? Flip, 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 flip. That yeah. it's like Pharaoh getting his heart hardened again. It's like, yeah. all right, now you're going to be w- delusioned. So with the with the rapture, it's talked about, and we talked about it last week, as, as, as it is in the days of Noah, and you pulled out the, the scripture reference in Matthew 24 to refer that refers to that. But um, the the rapture is going to occur that in, in the same way that it, it, it's at the last moment of time is when God's going to pull the church out. Because right now we are the ones that are restraining evil. Evil. And um, because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, in the days of Noah, it was all the way to the last possible moment was when God told Noah to get into the ark. It's going to be that last possible moment before all of humanity's not good. At, when, it, when it comes to the point where they're not, they won't be saved then that's when he's going to pull the church Where they out. relied on deception so much. They were listening to, to Satan deceiving, oh, look at it, it's not going to rain, he's building this stupid mm-hmm. boat, blah, 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 blah. Well, now delusion's kicking in mm-hmm. because you've rejected it so much that you're not allowing yourself to believe it. That God's not going to allow you to accept truth anymore because you've rejected it too much, mm-hmm. which is where delusion kicks in. I believe that if anyone would have came up right before he shut that ark up and said, you know what, I believe you, Get on the boat. The well, I think well, it did. I think from what yeah. I've read, the the doors were open up until it started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That that concept of deception is. We were talking about AI earlier. It's just a replication of information over and over and over again. Just watch Interstellar, which is really a pretty awesome movie. Uh, kind of geeked out science, but one of yeah. the things they Miller's talked, planet and the whole. I just talked about him, but seeing the event horizon. I oh, dude, so freaking cool! Yeah, yeah. but Nerds. there was one part of it where they're trying to. <laughs> They, they get mad at the daughter because she's talking about the moon landings and stuff. And they're saying, no, that was all contrived. That was all made up. And in, in the you. story, it was obviously a part of history, right. but future generations believe it's a hoax for whatever reason that they've turned to justify. And that's how simple it happens. It's a little bit of misinformation that's repeated over and over and over again. Let's look at evolution. Evolution was a concept. What? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. We just had this conversation okay. yesterday. Yeah. Okay, so ev- evolution was a concept that Darwin was like, hey, this is an idea. Darwin on his deathbed was like, no, that's not a thing. But we beat the drum of evolution so much that it has become fact. Mm-hmm. Just because. When it's a theory. When it's, it's South a theory, Park University. Somebody <laughs> has talked about it enough that it has become now the accepted truth. So now if you don't accept that, you're delusional. Mm-hmm. It's. Yeah. And we we talked about this yesterday, Andy, and and I, I forget I, I don't remember if I if I read it in the study or if it was it was a, a Bible scripture, but in the end days, it's almost going to be like the evil one or the presence knows that the end is near, and they're trying to cover all their bases. And we look at I'm not going to go political, but everybody's trying to cover bases nowadays. And so here we are, in near the end days, and they're talking about aliens being a real thing and that's what they're going to try to do to explain away millions of people disappearing in a blink of an eye they're already trying to lay the groundwork for the antichrist to rise up and say hey i've been telling you it's aliens come to me and i'll save you i'll do this take the mark of the beast do all this garbage and you'll it'll be safe under my care and it's it's all set up because they they feel it the enemy knows that he feels that the mm-hmm. devil knows that time is near. We talked Almost about that. Like, hold on. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, um, yeah. with the 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 podcast from Jimmy Evans on the the Satanist that that he knew or the former Satanist that uh-huh. he knew, and he said that that's that is where the deception, the major deception is. Well, you're talking about preparing our bases. There's a rumbling coming. That we just talked about it with um, the Old Testament and the Holocaust, or the not the Old Testament. We talk about it with the Holocaust. Satan knows that God's gathering his children back to come back home. So what's he going to do? Well, let's start wiping them out and murdering them by the millions in preparation for that. I think the enemy knows that the rapture is coming, that that the time is drawing short because the enemy knows the word, right? He knows the word probably better than most of us. He tempted Christ face to face on the mountain. He knew it well enough to tempt Christ. Uh, 
You know what I mean? That's yeah. ball, that's and ballsy. It, and it doesn't say yeah. it, uh, to go back yeah. to that. Just the guy who wrote it. The, the guy who is in the courts it. of heaven. <laughs> like, um, yeah. And it doesn't say that Christ wasn't tempted. It says the temptation of Christ. Christ was tempted, but he used his, the the word to overcome that temptation. Um, and just like now, and we we talked yesterday that that was good. Um, Sorry, it was just hitting me that now he is, he he is, is that living word. <laughs> yeah, um, your head swollen up for a second. That's right. He, we see that the alien <laughs> aspects coming because the government saying aliens are real. We have top scientists and astro astrophysics. I forget astronomers astrology that have said that we have astro sent astrology. radio waves. We have looked at as far as we can look no. and sent signals. There is no evidence of alien life out there. But the government is now saying, nope, there's aliens. But the people who give them that information is like, well, there's no real evidence about that. Yeah, but could there be? That's, that's kind of how they twist it. Yes. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. And they say that. And the only thing my response is, yeah, but Jesus. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what that deception is or how we're taken. It doesn't change the gospel. If I'm gone, it's the rapture. No, no, no. Let me rephrase that. When I'm gone. It's not aliens. It's not some scientific Russian probe. It's the rapture. Jesus you know, that, has called a, me home, and I'm probe. going that's home. A, that's a really interesting <laughs> like concept. Like the the idea of people being t what do they call it whenever the aliens come and actually take you up, abducted. Yeah, you, when you get abducted, you get the tractor beam. So <laughs> maybe maybe one of these episodes we can actually it's really good. Uh, we, we could talk about maybe the eternity past, and um, and, and maybe when we get my uncle on. He might be a good one to kind of talk about this because in his new book he talks about eternity's past and yeah your uncle has a book he does he's Don't got do several, it. He's got several do it. of them <laughs> uh we're, we're gonna wrap up this was a good foundation for where we're going next week but go do you we'll throw up a picture of his uncle's book it didn't come in we're gonna have him on in a couple weeks he's in september yeah, that's not that one. That's one of his um, old ones. He has a new book coming out. And yeah, but he's got we... airborne paratroopers on the front cover. Airborne! Airborne! So better. Hey, so before we get to interview him, uh, we do want to let you know, keep I looking for that. out the other day doing that. Mute him. Mute, mute him. He the one time on he speaks. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Jared, go ahead and plug the uncle's book, and we're going to have him yeah, on in so, a couple weeks. So my, my uncle has a, uh, he's got his doctorate in theology, he teaches up at a, uh, a Christian university up in, in Pittsburgh. And then he's also uh, an associate pastor at a church in Elkins. Um, he's written four. This is his fourth book. Um, it's called In the Fullness of Times, Discovering God's Plan for the Ages. And uh, th this particular book, I'm almost finished with it. It's, it's available ebook now everywhere. Um, the print copy just came out this week. I know Josh and I both ordered copies of the print copy of or the print version of it. And it was supposed to be in yesterday didn't quite make it in uh it's, it's going to be in the day um but it's it's a fantastic book that, that covers from he talks about ages past and in eternity past and and how could it be possible that the that there's a gap between genesis 1 1 and genesis 1 2 in the in the creation story um it talks about a lot of controversial topics that churches do not talk about today um for whatever reason that, that, that they don't and brings up some really good thought. Um, so please check the book out and uh, and, and and give it a good read. It, it, it is a, he wanted it to be kind of textbookish, so it's full of references, not just one scripture that's taken out of context. He puts passages of the scripture in, um, so that way you get the full context and then talks about the context of that scripture. That was a good PSA. And then one of these books, we're actually here at Do Talk, we're going to give away. Perry Stone if you advocacy. comment on the any video going forward, um, until the interview is here, you share it, like it. Any way we can kind of track what you're doing, we're going to give you away one of these books. So yep. that's just a plug to say thank you for watching the show and thank you. Yeah, and we're we're looking to try to get him on in September or October episode um, to talk about his book and some of his other ones. Um, no, one book. That's the deal. Yeah, well, I do have <laughs> one of his other ones. This he's he's got a total of four, but one of his other ones as in the days of Noah and this specifically talks about end times prophecies days and how it relates back to Elijah. relates back to the days of Noah. Song. So good stuff. This, this book is more, it's, it's available anywhere ebook um, and, uh, and on Amazon as well. It's amazing. And Andy may be here for that. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Are you, since you did the opening, you want to do the wrap up? 
Is Nick still muted? No, dude, Nick, you know, I do. I, I'm not. I can't. Oh, there, there you go. Hi, there it is. What, <laughs> what do you muted. have to say now? <laughs> You want me to do the wrap up? No, that's why I asked you to do the wrap up. You know, Perry Stone would have got this done right. Thanks for chiming in, Mountaineer <laughs> King of Dude Talk. Like and subscribe. Click the link down here. He thinks that's all you do. You can reach out to us via all the social media channels. Rumble. I was going to say Not something. Rumble. Else. Not Rumble. No Rumble. No oh. Rumble. Mm-hmm. X. YouTube. I keep saying it. To, I keep thinking the only way you can say Rumble is you have to sound like Hulk Hogan or something when you say Rumble. It. What you gonna do? Brother? I think we're also on MySpace, right? We might. <laughs> MySpace, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, what was your song on? No, no, we're not gonna do your own. <laughs> I wanna kiss you all over, <laughs> over and, and over again. There goes half the viewership dun, just plummeted. Dun, no, that's uh, this is where we get. This is where we get. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take us home. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. To, uh, make sure uh, Andy got that in there. Uh, make sure you tune in next week. To, next we're week. going to continue this conversation about <laughs> tribulation. Uh, so it, just in case you are watching this years from now and we're not here, because uh, good luck with that. I'm not going to be here. <laughs> you at least have a good reference, so <laughs> of how life's going to suck. We told you so. We told you so. Do talk, told you so. So <laughs> for <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the yes man Jared trip away Andy the coach Ryan that's your new name I'm sorry yeah, it is you. what it is what, what it used to be nothing okay Andy mm-hmm. okay Andy triple A Andy no, now it's always there. absent Andy he wasn't here to have one it'll change again I'm gonna do something Tom and you're gonna say dude there's Andy's new nickname if you don't sound just like that the, 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 <laughs> our host Josh <laughs> And of course, I'm Nick. He's <laughs> Mountaineer King of New Talk, Real Man Manly Talk. Nicky. Hanging on, Nick. <laughs> Hang on, Nick. <laughs>